What you're about to see is, in my opinion, a serious contender for greatest game of chess ever played. With the white pieces, we have AlphaZero, which is Google's self-learning AI program, which taught itself how to play chess in only four hours, I believe, by playing millions of games against itself. And at the end of that little session, it had surpassed the chess ability of every human who has ever existed as well as apparently every computer program that's ever been created by humans as it defeated Stockfish in a 100 game match and Stockfish was one of the top computer programs. I think a lot of people almost considered its chess playing ability to be godlike but AlphaZero demonstrated that it had some serious deficiencies. AlphaZero did not lose a single game. It was a very convincing defeat. So let's get right into it. AlphaZero plays knight f3 and we go into a king's indian. I'm not going to talk about these opening moves too much. They've been seen many, many times. And here we get to a moment where white decides to sacrifice a pawn. And this has been seen before. So alpha zero seems to favor peace activity over material. Uh, more so than other computer programs. So here it's going to sack a pawn basically so it can get its knight on the f5. Black takes out the pawn and this frees up the f5 square. And now this pawn is pinned. Can't capture another pawn or he's going to lose the bishop. So he defends. Okay, pawn takes, knight takes. Okay, so black is up a pawn. Alpha zero gets its knight f5 square. It likes this outpost. Knight c7 is played. This is anticipating e4, which is going to kick the knight anyway, and black wants to play d5 very quickly. If you, you know, mess around, well, let's say you go knight a6, another developing move. Now e4, you know, rookie one, it's a little harder to play d5 now because if you try it now, it's going to run into a problem because the bishop on e7 hangs after this big exchange, see? So that's one example of why you want to just drop the knight right back and get ready to play d5. Knight f6, playable, knight c3, but uh, the bishop can't go to f6. So that's probably why knight c7 is preferred. That clears up f6 for the bishop. That's a better square for that bishop than on e7. Okay, so e4, d5. Then alpha zero decides to take on d5, and then the knight captures knight c3. White is saying, okay, take my knight and mess up my pawn structure. I'll take on messed up pawns, you know, split pawns, in order for even more peace activity. Queen g4, hitting g7, threatening mate. If white were to play queen g4 before the knight takes on c3, this isn't quite as good because after, let's say, bishop f6, defending against mate, knight c3, now black doesn't have to take on c3. He can go knight d7, just develop, and he's pretty solid since the D file's not opened. Contrast that to what happens in the game where white waits for black to commit with knight takes c3, only now queen g4. If at this point black were to defend with the bishop, which he didn't do in the game g6 was played, but after bishop to f6, we take and knight d7 doesn't work anymore because rook d1 is going to cause big problems. This knight's pinned. If you try to get out of the pin, you know, the, the threat was rook takes here, queen takes, knight h6 check, winning the queen. And black does have this tricky try knight e5, but after knight h6 check, the king moves, I get the queen, you get my queen, rook takes a8. White's going to come out ahead of material in that line. Um, so after bishop f6, if black would have done that, the best defense is bishop c8. This is necessary to immediately try to get rid of that knight because there's too many threats. Now bishop a3 from white can be played and you need to just take the knight out. You try to move that rook, this is the kind of problem. There's a lot, of, a lot of threats involving this knight h6. A knight can't be taken because the pawn's pinned, king moves. It's the only square for the king, and then that's a fork of the king and queen. So that kind of stuff is necessary. This line, I'm, I'm not sure, this might have been better than what was played in the game if black had done this. And then challenge the queen right away. 
but in this line black is going to lose that c6 pawn so material equalizes that way but black's trying to hang on to that pawn so he played g6 which looks pretty you know it weakens the king pride quite a bit allowing knight h6 check uh stockfish didn't see any uh any short-term threats and there weren't any in fact if alpha zero hadn't sacrificed this knight in a few moves i don't think there was any any other way to really gain an, uh, any kind of advantage because king g7 is played and now okay we take the knight bishop c8 hitting the queen now this whole game black has a real problem getting this knight developed so basically stockfish is playing without a knight and without a rook so even though he's going to end up a piece up spoiler alert he's kind of down a piece because he's got two pieces out of play and let's just look at the first of many lines where he tries to develop the, the knight here we're going to go rook d1 and the queen is going to be lacking a safe haven we're going to hit the bishop there and then we got stuff like if the bishop moves we got this check king's got to move knight d6 and then we take that kind of thing just some sample lines there's probably a lot of lines to explore try to go to d7 knight f5 check right bishop f6 can be played bishop a3 if the rook moves we got this forking the rook and bishop just all kinds of problems so you, you don't have time for that bishop c8 hitting the queen and now queen f4 queen f3 would allow bishop g5 so you know hitting the knight and then you got to get out of there right but then takes 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 this allows a big simplification queen f6 defense c6 i can get my rook involved but now black can develop queen f4 ties up black more the queen moves to d6 this protects c6 so maybe the knight can move offers a queen trade you know up a pawn let's get the queens off the board so queen goes to a4, pressure on this pawn, g5. So blocking the defense of the knight, threatening, you got two pieces on that knight now. Now Stockfish probably thought that knight g4 was going to get played. But this is not what alpha zero had in mind, and this is an amazing positional piece sacrifice. There is no short-term compensation. Rook e1. Just getting another piece involved, looking at this bishop and saying, you know what, you want my knight? Take my knight. You're down how many pieces which are not participating in the game? So king takes h6, h4, pawn's pinned, so it needs more protection. If black tries to develop at this point, we're going to go takes, takes, and there goes your queen. Bishop takes g5 check. So that pawn needs more protection. Now we go bishop to e3. Bishop f5 is played. Now, queen was hit, queen moved, offering a queen exchange, queen c4. Now, right here, if you try to take everything on g5, the king can just kind of hide over here. You know, the bishop's guarding that diagonal. Queen doesn't have time to do anything, she's going to get taken. So, queen c4. Alpha zero did not want a queen trade. Now b5. And here alpha zero plays. H takes g5 a check. Queen d4. Queen can be challenged with a4, but after this takes, this allows us to go over here with check. That's why we take first. Don't have time for the queen to get onto this rank. King g6 is played. And now where do you move the queen? Kind of a stunner. h1. Doesn't look very active, but it supports bishop to e4. We got to get rid of that defensive piece, right? So a stockfish gets the king out of dodge because you try anything else. Well, here's the threat. Let's say if just black did nothing, you'd have bishop e4. And you try moving the king. Well, bishop d4 check. You try just going back. You're gonna, the queen's going to come in here, threatening the mate. But then, yeah, this just gets nasty. So pretty much the, the king just needs to start going back. Or everything's going to go south really fast. So king g7, bishop e4. Just going to peel away the defenses from around the king. 
the bishop goes back. Now, I'm not sure why bishop takes e4 wasn't played. Because this seems like a reasonable alternative. King goes back, and then bishop d4. These are some lines that Stockfish is giving. Now, you know, I'm using Stockfish's analysis, but remember, Stockfish is the loser of this game. So you take it with a grain of salt. This is the line Stockfish likes for white and how black should respond. Um, and who knows? Maybe things would have would have gone better. But with bishop g6, this allows bishop takes and then pawn takes. You can't take with the king because bishop d4 and now the king's, you know, kind of trapped. He's going to run into a big problem after queen e4 check. Now queen h3 is played by alpha 0. The threat here is bishop d4 check here, and then the queen comes into e6 check. You know, you block it, but now I'll go here. It's, it's going to be curtains. So bishop f6 is a pretty obvious move. Let's defend that diagonal. King g2, OK? White's just, you know, he's got another, another attacking route. Rook to h1 is coming. So what are you doing? Queen takes a2 is what Stockfish played with the idea of going to g8 to defend that way. Rook h8 is an interesting idea. And then queen g4. At first Stockfish thinks this is fine, but then I think its evaluation starts to skew in white's favor. Yeah, the rook needs to go back here because bishop d4 is coming. This was an issue too. Yeah, the king is going to get drawn out in the middle if there's not another piece to capture instead of, you know, you don't want the king to capture. So bishop d4. And you don't really want to capture on d4 because that's going to be, you know, pretty bad. So you can try to add more defense. This is a nice move here, bishop e5. Now Stockfish says just give up the queen. It's your best shot at this point. But Anyway... Queen takes a2. Stockfish is saying, hey, I'll grab another pawn and then I'll just get back there to g8, defend. Rook h1 as planned, Rook, queen g8 defending. And here, alpha 0 plays an incredible move, which I don't think a human would find in a million years. And it even takes Stockfish a lot of analysis and a lot of think time before it begins to realize that this is a good move. Uh, it's based on some very specific and very deep tactics, which I'm going to try to explain. The move is c4. And so you look at it and you just think, what in the world does that do? Well, there's two critical lines, and in one of them, the black queen needs to be off of d5. It needs to be deprived of that square, so it accomplishes that. And in the other one, that's the line where b takes c4 is played. In this line, the white queen wants access to c4, which wouldn't be possible if the pawn hadn't been captured. So let's look at both lines. First of all, let's look at if c4 hadn't been played, this is the defensive idea of black that white's trying to prevent. So rook d8, you're going to go takes, takes, queen c8. And queen d5 check is the, the problem move for white here. King has to move, has to keep protection on the rook, right? Queen d1 check, king moves. Now if you try king h2, there's queen d7. And now it looks like white's going to lose. What are you doing with the queen? You're going to have to trade queens, and now you're just a piece down. OK, so that's the one line that white was addressing. The other line is, is more complicated. That's where the pawn is taken, c4. b takes c4, and white launches an attack. You know, the idea is to take here. So g4, preventing that, because that, that will just be, you know, the bishop's going to be hit and, you know, the position's going to fall apart. So gives up that pawn. Queen here. f5's coming, so the bishop moves so that the rook can take on f5. So f5, rook takes. Okay, white checks the king. King moves. Rook comes in here. White's not even worried about sacking an exchange. Rook d6 check is going to be a problem so the bishop takes so that if this happens you got a square for the king 
but that's not what happens. Queen d4 check. King moves. We take the bishop now, and there's no preventing queen c4 check, and white's king is going to be in a mating net. So that is the line, the critical line, after b takes c4. Those are the two critical lines that the move c4 addresses. An incredibly deep move. Got to be considered one of the greatest moves ever played in the history of chess, I would say. So after this, Stockfish wisely realizes that rook d8 isn't working and plays rook e8 to prevent f4 because the bishop will be taken. So bishop here, we're just going to get rid of a defensive piece around the king. Bishop takes, rook takes, and rook d8 is played right away. You want to challenge that rook. If white can double the rooks, it's going to be pretty bad. Rook takes, queen takes, queen e6. Knight d7 is finally played because black realizes there's there's no hope. You know, what kind of move can black make here? Let's say a5. Well, queen e5 check. Queen f6. It's going to lose the queen. I mean, what else are you going to do? You know, anywhere else you move that king, it's going to get mated. All right. So knight d7 is finally played. So obviously the knight's pinned. And black goes in for this variation where... He ends up the exchange down with a couple pawns. But Alpha Zero has accurately assessed this position as winning for white because these pawns are just too hard to defend. Black can't hold it together. So after king f6, white takes this pawn and just plays king f3, you know. Don't even need to grab that a7 pawn yet. Let's get the king into the game. Those pawns aren't going to be defended. You know, knight d4 check. King e4, okay, uh-oh, looks like black defended. No, rook c8, knight can't stay. We'll hit this pawn, knight can go here, give the knight a little kick. Don't want to take here or else that's a fork and you lose. Alpha zero saw it, knight goes here, defend this pawn, and eventually all the black pawns are going to start dropping. Let's get the king active first. Knight goes here, rook takes one pawn. Knight check, king e4. Knight c4. Yeah, this doesn't require a lot of commentary. And this is how it ended up. I'm gonna grab another pawn. And that's the game. So that is an amazing example of a new kind of chess learning created by Google, AlphaZero.